Greetings, Earthling. I am Aota. I'm working on helping as many people as I can be happy, healthy, and wealthy. Read all the stories on HomeOffice.Studio and watch all the videos to get a very advanced, entertaining education. Uh, greetings, Earthlings. Another video. This ought to be a pretty interesting one. I'm going to do one about sexual vitality. I didn't really know what to call it. It's just, it's about the whole issue of sexuality, healthy sexuality. I thought sexual vitality was a little bit more interesting than healthy sexuality, but that's really all it is, uh, you know, because it's a really super important issue for people, recovering people, for all people, you know, you don't even necessarily have to be having problems really uh, but uh so sexual vitality it's a it's a like i said it's a powerful instinct you know that everybody has to deal with you know having the uh instinct is everybody has it the issue is what your response how do you how do you express that instinct is is kind of that's the part that's voluntary you know so because it is you know, your, your behavior is voluntary. You know, that having sexuality is not, not everybody has sexuality. That's what we're born with it. But we do have, how we express that sexuality is voluntary. And um, there is the divine law of marriage will never change. You know, the, and the divine law of marriage is the marriage between one man and one woman. And it's a biological law, or it's actually a spiritual law. The divine law of marriage is a spiritual law that, you know, biology kind of conforms to that spiritual law, but it's really a spiritual law. And um, it's kind of like gravity. It really doesn't depend on what you want necessarily. It, it depends on, it just is what it is. It's the law. And we prosper when we follow that law and we suffer when we don't. And, you know, and I'm not talking about necessarily immediate pleasure, you know, because people can get immediate pleasure from all kinds of things that are not very good for them and not right or healthy or anything, something. So, but the divine law of marriage and just about every religion has the law of marriage in one form or another, you know, it kind of does you know and there was you know there was a, the deal of having more than one wife for a long time and that's kind of been abolished at this point um the main thing is to be fair you know is you know men and women are equal partners the man is the head of the family but the the woman is the, his equal partner and the, the men and women are different. They're not the same. Men and women are not, they're equal, but they're not the same. You know, the woman, she bears the children. She has kids. The man, he goes out and typically, you know, not always, but typically the man is the one person who travels around trades, you know, and does all the, the most of the trading and things like that. All the women, they go out, they do most of the shopping. So that's a, uh, you know, not necessarily, you know, it's, it's a little bit, it's, there's some flexibility involved in that roles, you know, the roles the man and the woman play in the family. Typically the mother is the, the, she's for one thing, the most important responsibility of all is the mother is the first teacher of all children. Every person born on our earth, everyone, every single one. The mother is the first teacher of that child, and uh, you know, and and that's a huge responsibility. You know, so it's not you know, it's not that there's anything wrong with women going out and working. There, there's not. I mean, women should be treated equally in the workplace, and they may they have qualities that improve the workplace. The personality of women do, and uh, but. Uh, you know, it's really important that the mother is involved in raising the kids pretty close. And it's also really important the father is involved in raising the kids. Uh, uh, kids need both a mother and a father. 
and they need to see the mother and father relating to each other. That's how they learn how to have a relationship with their wife is by watching their parents. And and not you know, and another thing is uh, you know the the an anamkara that's like an ancient uh, Celtic phrase that means like soulmate you know and your be- you want I want to marry my best friend you know I'm not a really good uh, an expert on this subject you know my family has been really terribly dysfunctional you know and I'm writing this is kind of a hypothetical story uh, I'm writing it so I'm very interested in this story because I'm you know it's been a lot of time thinking about why am I so screwed up you know and how can I fix it you know so and but I have done a lot it's not really one of my favorite subjects you know like I haven't read a whole lot of books about relationships or anything like that or sexuality that's not really a very interesting subject to read about, I think. You know, some people might like doing that, but I, I've just never been. I've been more interested in. I'm interested in human civilization, so I I don't know why I've just that you know that instinct. So that would actually be kind of an interesting subject to look into. You can you know and like how the brain, you know what chemicals are operating. You know there's actually could be a lot of interesting stuff about that sexual sexuality you know facet of human nature and but anamkara you know you get you want to meet that's one of the that is probably the most important relationship but other than between you and god you know that's that's always the most important relationship is the relation your, your relationship with god other than that your your wife or spouse your spouse is your most important relationship and that everybody needs to have that. Not everybody's going to have that. You know, I, I was married for four years and I messed that up too, you know, because I just, I'm really kind of a dysfunctional per- person. That's why I'm so interested in this subject. That's why I read all these books about, you know, psychology and spirituality was to try to figure out what a normal human being is like. What's a healthy human being supposed to be like, man? Because I, obviously I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't learn that from my parents, unfortunately. Because their life was pretty screwed up, too. And, you know, and it's just gener- for generations, you know, it's been dysfunctional. But um, so I, I've studied it and I looked at it and, I, you know, the my values are the values... I read about, you know, the, the, the religion, you know, I read the Bible and the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita. And um, now I read the Baha'i writings and those are my values. Even though I don't really practice the Baha'i faith very well, I mean, you know, I got a bad temper and I, I'm very interested. I've always been interested in history and news and, you know, what's going on in the world, which a lot of what the news is about is about politics and Baha'is aren't supposed to even talk about politics. We're supposed to forget about that, you know, and I wish I could do that, I guess, but it's one of my, it's always been one of my favorite subjects. I can remember in high school reading, they used to give us this newspaper called the uh, Current Events, and I would be reading it, and it's all about what's going on in the world, you know, And, and, and so I'm interested in that. It's just interesting, and so anyway, now, uh, you know, it's trying to have some sense of what is healthy human nature. And one of the things I've learned in all my studying, reading books about it, is that, uh, you know, the human kingdom of life is separate and distinct from the animal kingdom of life. And the, the main difference, and it, it's not really one thing I finally come to conclude and I don't it's not really a conclusion because I'm always learning but you know the Bible says first there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so that kind of indicates a language which is also the very first thing Adam starts doing naming the plants and animals in the garden which is language and so language is one of the very first things that distinctive that human beings have that that's you know 
distinguishes human beings, the, the human kingdom of life from the animal kingdom of life. And the, the law of marriage, you know, what language is, is a set of rules. You know, nouns, verbs, and how they all relate to each other, it's rules. And this natural law of language, you know, because it, it evolves naturally and it's not like something like the committee sat down and figured out what's the rules. I mean, I suppose you could do that. They have, uh, what was that language? Uh, there's a language, it's called, uh, anyway, I can't think of it right now, where they're trying to invent a new like, universal language. But uh, mostly it just evolves naturally over thousands of years. And language, uh, and so you got language, and, that, and it's a set of rules. And then the divine law of marriage is a particular rule that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with language, but it's a rule that is something that is kind of, it's a spiritual rule. It's not necessarily a biological rule. You know, I, even though it is, a, there is biological, the whole male, female, that is definitely a, bio, a law of biology is the whole male, female. It's, it's just part of nature you know that's it's like yin and yang i mean it's just part of nature of the universe and uh but the divine law of marriage is is kind of comes with language where we we can speak and we can have we can you know because language is the foundation of, of our consciousness human con you know we think you know, the one thing we have, you know, animals have, we have emotion in common with the animal kingdom. But the, uh, you know, thinking is human, you know, and that comes from language. You know, it's like language is the, the cause. Thinking is one of its effects. And, you know, communications is another one. There's different effects. Uh, but, but, you know, we, if it wasn't for language, there, we would, there wouldn't be any thinking. It, we would just be feeling. And um, so there's all this, you know, and, and so that's got to be your most important relationship is with your spouse. And then you raise up your kid and your, ch your children, they, as soon as they're conceived, they, they start, they're, they're influenced by their environment. So when, when they're in the womb, when they're growing in the womb, the chemistry of the mother, you know, is affecting the baby. You know, that's because it's the baby is being constructed and built. And this is all being hardwired into the baby. And, and, and so if that mother feels love and safe and, you know, com, you know, and stuff like that and healthy and eating good, healthy food and stuff like that, that is going to affect the baby as it develops within the womb. And at a certain stage in its development, it begins to be able to hear and, you know, and sense, you know, it can detect the presence of other people around them. It can detect the presence of the father, independent of what that, that presence, the influence that, that the father's presence has on the mother, which is very significant that's going to affect the chemistry of the womb. You know, if the mother feels loved or conversely abandoned, you know, then that's going to have a not healthy effect. And so that, the, that influences the baby and deeply in the very, it's being hardwired into the consciousness of that person. And then, you know, and of course, then they're born and that, that influence continues as long as they're alive, you know, and they watch the, their mother and father, how they relate. And that's how they learn how to be a spouse is by watching their parents. And so this is a generational thing. And, and another thing about family values is how they're the, the mother, the grandparents and, you know, and the whole larger family has an effect also you know for one thing if the mother and father are having a, a, a conflict about something the most important counselor you know where they can seek help you know and solutions for the conflict is their grandparents 
you know, and uh, aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters and all that, you know, the family. And we need to use that and, 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 and we need to be teaching this in school, how vitally important our families are. Strengthening our state needs to help hold up our families and not tear them down or ignore them or dismiss them like they're not important. You know, as far as sexual misconduct, it's so common. It's, it's, it's a very common thing and it needs to be addressed and we need to talk about it. You know, the main thing is you want to be giving. The first number one thing I would say about how to your, your sexual relationship with your spouse, the spouse, your spouse is the only person. If you're having sex with anybody other than your spouse, that's sexual misconduct. And I'm not an innocent victim on, on this. You know, I mean, I'm not perfect about this uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But uh, it's, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's what God says. God makes the rules and what he says is the rules. And that's what I recommend. And, uh, you know, and I thought, oh, I can't really talk about that because I'm not perfect. Well, no, I don't think that. I'm going to say that uh, the best, you know, expression of sexuality is within marriage and being married to a person. And, uh, you know, and the main thing about it is you want to, and it, it can't, you don't want to be, it can't be about getting, you know, pleasure for yourself. You know, you want to be about giving pleasure and what can you give to your wife How, you know you're you got to think about your spouse is somebody that you want to take care of and you want to make them make sure they enjoy marriage and life and sex and every part of your life together and you know and you want to spend a lot more time thinking about your spouse than how you how is, is your spouse happy you know and um, then also just uh, as far as the sexual misconduct goes, you know, we definitely do need to take heal you know, and have the best possible, you know, methods and strategies for healing the victims of sexual misconduct. But one thing I rarely, I don't think I've ever seen any. I've never read a book about it or seen a book about it or anything, is how to heal the the pred sexual predators, you know, the not the victims of the sexual sexuality, but the person who's causing it, you know, and heal them. You know, because if we want to solve this problem, you know, it's just like the drug problem, you know, I don't want to just, you know, solve the problem for one person and let it continue on for everybody else. I want that solve, actually solve the problem, you know, and the same thing with the sexuality issue is I don't want to just heal one individual. I want to heal the individual, but I also want to heal the human race. And, 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 and I want this to be taught in school in an appropriate way, the age appropriate way and all that, where, and family values has to be a part of that education. What they're teaching in school is not healthy. It's corrupt. You know, they're teaching things in school that are just not true. You know, this idea that we can, that people can live without the family is not true. And it's a, it's a, it's a great, it's a very extremely harmful, you know, thing that is being is happening to our civilization and teaching our, these people these so-called scientists you know they think they're so smart and so much smarter than everybody else they should be telling everybody what to do and they don't know what they're talking about because you know science is it's just seeking the truth you know and they're not seeking the truth they have an opinion and they seek information that confirms their opinion you know they have an agenda Everybody has an agenda. There's nothing wrong with having an agenda, but trying to, that's not what science is. Science is not an, it's an agenda, and but the agenda of science is to seek the truth about natural history 
and you know, and, and re, you know, material reality. What's you know, there's a science of economics. There's a science of marriage. There's a science of you know, relationships and psychology and all that. And those are sciences, and we need to study them and practice them and and use every available means. But you can't ignore the spiritual part of human nature because that is just as real as any other part of human nature. It's not man-made. You know, everyone wants to say religion is man-made. No, it's not. God is the source of every true religion. And um, God does not need religion. Human beings need religion. You know, God loves every single human being without exception. In order for us to benefit from that love, we need to love God. Because our love for God is is the accepting God's love for us. It's, it, and it lets that in. If we don't love God, it, it's, it won't come in. God will not force us to do anything. He doesn't need us. But we do. We need him, yeah, and that's just the way it is, you know. You know, and yeah, and we got to heal the families. You know, all of our treatment programs, our education programs, and our treatment programs need to be family oriented and treating families and healing families and raising families. You know, one thing you can do individually is, uh, you know, practice. You know, a big part of the self discipline. You know, when we act, follow the laws of God, you know, and submission to God is like loving God is submission to God. That's how it works. And so when we follow this law of God, God says, get married and have kids and have a family. And we follow that principle, even though our, per, our you know, desire, our biological di- desire just wants to have sex and it doesn't really matter. We don't really care who we have sex with. By disciplining that and following those family values, that is a very fundamental feature of freedom. That's how we get free, is by following the rules revealed by God. That's what freedom is. Freedom is not lawless. It's, freedom is lawful, not lawless. You know, it's, it's like by following the rule of law, that's the difference between wild and free. You know, the human race is terraforming earth from a wilderness into a garden. Okay, and by following the rules, these rules that are revealed and taught in, in human language, that is freedom. And that's the difference between a wild animal and a civilized human being. And we you know the, the God reveals these rules and these laws and these div- the divine rule of law. He sends prophets every thousand years or so a new prophet appears, you know, Abraham, Moses, you know, Noah, Buddha, and, you know, and all of them, Jesus and Muhammad. These are the prophets of God, and they reveal the Word of God, and He teaches us. And it's like we learn, and we're growing, and we learn self-discipline. We follow these rules that God reveals, and by following those rules, that we're we're practicing self-discipline because our our biological instincts are just wanting to run wild, which is natural. But these rules revealed by God are teaching us to discipline ourselves and follow a set of rules and they these by doing that that is the very nature of freedom and um, so that's what we do I like to practice qigong you know I you know physically you know exercise my favorite exercise is qigong and uh because I, you know, I, I like it because of the whole concept of chi. I think chi is that ocean of power the whole universe is made out of. You know, you know, the dark energy. You know, the seventy-two percent of the mass of the universe is dark energy. I think that's the chi, and the dark matter. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Maybe that's the chi, and then the. This, all the stars in the galaxies that we can see is, is 5% of the mass of the universe. And um, 
So you practice Qigong and you eat natural whole food, lots of healthy, you know, natural whole food instead of the processed food. And, uh, you know, and make sure, you, you know, because like I said, that especially when the mother's pregnant, you want to make sure she's eating a very, you know, good diet of healthy whole food. And then uh, dress for success, you know, get yourself cleaned up, make yourself look good and uh, your house, clean your house and keep yourself clean, neat and clean and well organized and start doing this when you're a young, you know, a young kid. Start cleaning up after yourself and keeping yourself clean and presentable and making yourself, you know, make yourself look like a, a very high performance teammate at work, you know, make yourself productive. You know, I always figure, you know, I got to take care, you know, I got two problems, finance and romance. You know, and I figured I gotta, I really need to start with finance and make myself attractive, you know, and make, you know, make myself, first of all, productive and produce something valuable and trade that and get really good at making deals and stuff like that and making money and then get married and meet somebody I like and get married and have fun, you know, with your spouse. And, uh, you know, the whole freedom, equality and justice for all issue is, Ever, there's no, you know, you've got to treat your spouse as your equal. There's no such thing as an inferior or superior human being. You know, and there's a lot of this weird competition going on about people wanting to be, you know, in charge, you know, you know racial and, you know, women want to be in charge and all this just because they, they think they've been oppressed. Maybe they have been. I'm not saying they haven't been. I'm just saying you know, they want to be the oppressor, you know, and I'm going, that's a dumb, that's just dumb. And that's not going to help anybody. And it's probably going to cause a lot of trouble. But what we need to do is understand that freedom, equality, and justice for all, those are natural laws that exist in reality. They're, they're not man-made rules. You know, the, the words are man-made, but the, the, what those words represent is not. You know, the, that freedom, I just talked about how freedom is lawful. That is true, that's the nature of human nature. You know, human consciousness is governed by the, these rules of law revealed by God. And when we follow those rules, we prosper. When we don't follow those rules, that's the end of civilization every time. You know, so, and you practice that in your own personal life. You practice it, you know, by not being an oppressor, not being a bully, you know, and treating everybody respectfully and, you know, kind, friendly and polite, you know, and um, be fair, you know, don't be letting, you know, don't just be fair, you know, and, and practice that to everybody, you know, you don't want to, you know, you can't be a bully and f be free. Free people are, are never bullies because in order to be free, you have to understand everybody is free. You, you, it's not just one person is free and everybody else is a slave. That's not freedom, you know? And so you have to give away. If you want to keep, if you want to be free, you have to let everybody be free. And so, you know, and that's justice for all. Justice is the absence of oppression. And oppression is the absence of justice you know so practice that practice loving kindness and compassion and gentle be gentle you know and and just treat every human being like your friend I like the word Ubuntu I'm, somebody told me I was pr pronouncing that wrong but it just looks like Ubuntu to me and uh it's about, it means friendship, being friends with every human being you meet and being friends with the whole entire human race, you know, and that's, that's what I want. I, I believe in that and I want that. And, you know, it's fun. I like sex as much as anybody and, uh, you know, but it's how you do it is important. And you got to focus on your, your partner. 
and making sure you, you know your partner is having fun not just you you know and that's probably one of the worst things you know people do they get you know they are interested in their own pleasure and you need to be interested in your partner's pleasure and uh, you know there's nothing wrong with pleasure pleasure is a good thing and one thing you, you know happiness and pleasure are two different things you know happiness is is a spiritual thing and it's joy and all that and pleasure is a more of a material thing and it's a good thing there's nothing wrong with pleasure but how you do it is important and if you you can make it a good thing into a bad thing by not following the divine rule of law you know the the divine law of marriage is very important and uh follow that you know that gives you your self-discipline which is kind of like a precursor to freedom self-determination you know and and all that you know because i'm really into that with what's going on in the world today and everybody trying to tell everybody else what to do and I'm more into self-determination. Matter of fact, I talk about self-determination a lot more than I talk about all this other stuff. And so I thought it would be a good idea for me to talk about the self-determination is is a you know it's like a result of self-discipline, and the self-discipline is a result of following the rules, the divine rule of law. You know, my, you know, the rule of man, you know, if I make the rules in my own life, that's the rule of man. You know, and mob rules is just another, even worse version of the rule of man. You know, so, you know, what I want to do is I want to follow the divine rule of law and the natural laws of human nature and civilization. Because I believe God is God makes the rules. He makes the law of gravity and the speed of light and all the natural laws in the universe, including all the spiritual laws of human nature and civilization. And that's what God does. He makes the rules. And the universe is evolving according to the rules revealed by God. And he revealed all the, the, the laws of gravity and whatever causes the universe to exist are revealed by God our rules revealed by God the natural laws and we learn you know we learn how to build machines that fly by following those natural laws you know and and that's and I'm saying that we learn how to be healthy human beings and how to build sustainable civilizations by following the divine rule of law of human nature and civilization and that's what I'm t talking about and I'm not perfect uh, you know and I could be wrong about th some of the details but I, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm you know I didn't make this up I learned it by reading the Word of God and I you know I've read most of the religions of the world I even read the Kama Sutra which is a big huge book the size of a Bible that's just about this one subject you know, Hindu, I think, I'm pretty sure it's Hindu, you know, Hindu or Buddhist. It's from India, Kama Sutra, and I read that book from start to finish. And I, I've read all of the scriptures of the Hindu scriptures, Buddhist scriptures, Muslim, you know. I've even read the Zoroastrian, Zen Devesta, from start to finish. And I, you know, and I, because, you know, I've had, I had a lot of problems to try to survive and I don't think I've done a very good job but I've studied all these writings and I have a lot of knowledge because I did that I seeking the truth and trying to escape from the poverty and dysfunction in my own life and I have and I'm just trying to share what I've learned and that's what I'm doing here today and it's fun and you know and I wish I want everybody to be happy and healthy and wealthy. I, I want to, my, one of my top priorities to eliminate poverty, my own poverty and, and anybody else's poverty. You know, I want everybody to be prosperous, peaceful, prosperous, happy, healthy, and wealthy, you know, 
And that's what all these stories are about, is I'm trying to help you know, in any way I can. You know, you read the stories and you're still going to be you and you're still going to be responsible for yourself. I cannot do this for anybody other than myself. Every person has to do it themselves, but you can learn it by reading other people's writings. I do. I read all kinds of people's writings and uh, and I learn things from them and I go on. But then it's my decision to do this or that or whatever. And I try to figure out how I can best be the best person I can be and I recommend that you do that too and make yourself into a high performance teammate and what all the different teams you're a member of your family your career you know your business your and and no matter what even if you got a job you're still in business you're still the CEO of your own company and you're trading your your just like I've been thinking today about sales you're selling other people's products you know, you might be selling other people's products by working at a store or whatever, or in another business, somebody else's business. So anyway, I'm getting up to that 38 minute limit. I'm getting close to the 38 minute limit on my phone. And so I'm going to go ahead and end this little story. And I hope it's an enjoyable story. I'm trying to improve my storytelling style. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job. I'm trying, you know, the technology. I'm getting a little bit better with the technology, but I can still, it'll, it'll get better. You know, it's practice. Practice using your equipment and your tools and get better and better at it. Whatever job your job is, get really good at it and make yourself a very high performance, whatever, teammate. And um, have fun, you know, have fun exercising your creative freedom, you know, create, everybody is creative, you know, so create something valuable and trade that in our one universal and divine civilization. Peace be with you.